blood in the streets. Do I know this song? That's not on the album. Blood in the streets. Get Fucked was this mongoloid ADHD uh, hyperactive child running around in your living room jacking off and cutting himself with razor blades. Whereas this record, Blood in the Streets, is more about a fucking shark coming at you in the water and there's nothing you can do about it. I think the song's about killing a hooker. We always had people telling us that Get Fucked is like, oh, that's like your master of puppets, you know. I think that for us really marked this uh, point as a band for us where we kind of, you know, stepped out of our uh, Ramones core, you know, really boxed in Ramones core vibe and kind of went for something a little bit different. And, uh, you know, on all fronts, Get Fucked was like a knock out of the park. It was a fucking hit for us, you know. Maybe it's about, um, I don't know, a blood bank. One of the first records that I got that made me want to play music was Kiss Crazy Nights. And, uh, you know, that really started everything for me in terms of, you know, wanting to play music, wanting to fucking cover my face and uh, do stuff in a theatrical way, but also in a musical way. Hugely inspirational, hugely influential, that record. And uh, it was fucking cool that uh, for this record, when I was writing all the lyrics, um, I got in contact with this guy, Adam Mitchell. And uh, Adam Mitchell has written lyrics and arrangements with Kiss, and specifically Adam Mitchell wrote Crazy Nights, the record and the song with Kiss. So uh, I was able to, you know, talk to him and... Uh... Crashing, portable blood bank crashing. Imagine the blood that come out of that situation. Literally after I got off the phone with Adam, I walked into the next room, I picked up my guitar and I wrote Blood in the Streets. And it's like, this is the title track, this is the album title, this is the manifesto, this is the fucking, you know, this is what we're about now, and it was that quick. And it really informed our entire direction on this record, which was, we're not going to box ourselves in to do what we did before. So this is the Jason saying, all right, we're new and improved for obvious reasons, and uh, we're coming in. We're taking names, we're kicking ass. Get Fucked is a good record, and it's done well for the Jasons, but I'm gonna fucking bury that record. That was the mentality, you know, fuck that record. Everything is bigger. It's intentionally well-produced. You know, it doesn't sound like it was recorded in a basement. We've already proven with five records that we can get together in a fucking weekend and do everything in like one take and knock everything out and come out with a good record. Would never play a 12 string, but this is shaped like a Mosrite. So no fucking problem, Johnny Ramone approved. Yo, what do you think about that? Add that? To the end, it sounded sloppy, but that's pretty sloppy. But like that, that on the end part, yeah. Just try to show how good we actually are, as opposed to how shitty we used to be. Uh, I decided since I got to my own studio at home that uh, I would do most of my tracks here. Uh, one, uh, it gives me time to do things at my own pace, relax, have some coffee. Uh, the other, I think it adds to the productivity of the album. You know, V can go up, he can do his thing while I'm here doing my thing. You said you'd never been afraid of the dark Until you stared into the eyes of the shark That'd be pretty crazy, people with needles in their arms Running around screaming Get their eyes poked out Like that felouchy felchy guy Not like any of that canned shit Like really loud in your face drums from the 80s 
we wanted the drums to sound like Eric Carr's drums sounded on Creatures of the Night. Yo, so the first approach to the new record was to think, what did the drummer do that I could do fucking 50 times better? So the first thing I thought was this. For those that don't know what this is, this is a hi-hat clutch. Sometimes it's open, sometimes it's closed. The other bonehead just had it open. <laughs> the damn time you know he just keeps doing like these jazz influenced fills and stuff and it's just taking a, a very uh you know it just sounds modern and i don't like it i hate it open closed open closed could be a. Uh, you know, like street shocks, but like not a cartoon for kids, like a movie where they like the shark goes through the streets and eats the people. There'd be blood in the streets then. That'd be a lot of blood. Imagine the shark blood from swimming through that pavement. This record kind of has more of a sort of celebratory um, sort of. I guess you could call it a party vibe, but it's not really about an actual, you know, fucking having a party with your friends. It's more like a celebration of, you know, we were on the fucking bottom down there with the shit and the filth and the sewers and we kind of climbed our way out, you know. And uh, now we're standing on top of this fucking heap of all these people and bands that didn't think that, you know, we were going to make it past our first record. And all these fucking douchebags that, you know, say we're just a gimmick van because we wear hockey masks. And, uh, you know, we're, we're fucking standing up here watching those people eat their words, you know, as we continue to, to be successful and continue to make new strides. And, you know, a lot of the fucking scenesters that were around when we started out, you know, we've watched their bands fucking fall to the wayside and we've watched them fucking break up and lose their shit. And, uh, you know, we're still we're still here. There's no holds barred, it's a fucking war zone. You got me as a gunslinger, you got V as a gunslinger. Uh, we're just, we're shooting everybody down. Could be a... I don't know. Could be like a scene from The Shining. Where the elevator opens, or is that Hellraiser? Or Amityville Horror. Oh, Amityville Horror, where he falls through the floor. And he lands in the blood. You know, the big the big hit from the last record was I Want to Be an Asshole. And that didn't have anything to do with Friday the 13th, you know. So that was intentional. You know, if you fucking box your band in to everything has to be about Friday the 13th, then how far can you really go, you know. So, Or what if it's a gang movie? The bloods are in the streets. You know, the whole idea of the fact that we're a gimmick band, you know, sure, you know, you can you can throw us in that category and that's fine. But let's be honest, the Ramones were a fucking gimmick band. Looking for the Crips. Read Johnny Ramones' book. That motherfucker wouldn't carry groceries because he was afraid he would be seen by a fucking Ramones fan. Anarchy and all that horse shit. So if you want to talk about people that run around being in character for most of their fucking lives and their careers, look at fucking Johnny Ramone. And the Wu-Tang Clan. The Riverdales. Madonna. The fucking high school dropouts. The Huntington. And Pat Termite. Ramone's core bands are fucking gimmick bands. Gene Simmons. What's their gimmick? They look exactly like the fucking Ramones. They sound exactly like the fucking Ramones. Motley Crue. God damn, look at Jerry only. Jesus fucking Christ. 80s kiss. You can even take a band like fucking Bad Religion. They're a fucking gimmick band. You know, you listen to Bad Religion when you want to feel empowered about something. Ooh, I'm making a difference. I'm listening to Bad Religion. I'm educating myself. Whatever. That's what it is. You get up on stage in your little chucks, your tight jeans, your brand new leather jacket, and you do the old Johnny Ramone split while you're down picking with your rip-off Mosrite guitar and you don't think you're in a fucking gimmick band?
I don't know much about this song. There's a lyric in the song that says, uh, death is cheap when everybody is a martyr. And uh, that's, that's about the idea that everybody out there is pretending to be everybody's friend. And, you know, oh, I'm not here to help the scene. I'm here for part of the scene. You know, I, I just want to help everybody. And, uh, you know, from our perspective, when everybody's doing that, there's something to be said for saying, no, this is about me. I'm going to make this fucking decision to benefit myself. You know, a lot of people pretend to be charitable and a lot of people pretend to be, you know, cordial and helpful. But in behind the scenes, they're backstabbers and they're shady people. And we've seen it. You know, we've we've interacted with enough scenes and enough bands that we know we don't want to be part of it. You know, we want to be in it but not of it. And, uh, you know, I think when you, when you spend too much time, you know, engaging in pleasantries and sucking everybody's dick and telling everybody that their band's great and their new record's great and all that honesty gets stripped out of it, you know, you really stop being an authentic person. You stop being an authentic band. So, you know, from our estimation, you know, death is cheap when everybody is a martyr, meaning... There's something to be said for saying, no, this is about me. This is about my band. You know, I don't want to fucking thank other bands when I'm on stage. This is my fucking time. You know, they had their time and that's great. And I'll support them afterwards. But when I'm up here, this is my time, you know. So uh, we're not going to humble ourselves to anybody, you know, whether or not we're playing with bands that we love or not. When it comes down to it, this is about the Jasons. Blood in the Streets is a fun song. It's a good party song. It'll get people moving. It's vengeance in the form of just taking care of yourself and rising above it and being successful. I can make the sound go up and down and What are we doing, 3D? Making the shit work and stuff. Mm.